Everybody here, welcome again to my YouTube channel. I remember my humble self, Dr. Nkujo Nujena. In today's class, we're we'll talking about uh, another a category of parasites which uh, I've mentioned in my previous classes. Now, the name of the parasite is uh, Plethelminthes. I remember I said that we have three categories of parasites in parasitology. I mentioned the first one as protozoa, the second one as uh, Plethelminthes, and, and the third one as Nematoda. So we are going to be looking at uh, Plethelminthes in the next few minutes. So Plethelminthes, what are Plethelminthes? These are group of worms that are flat. The word helmet means worm, and the plate was coined from the word plate. And of course, we know that uh, plates are usually flat. So plate helmets are flat worms. That is their common name. As a matter of fact, these are the group of worms that are those who ventrally flattened. That means that within the, their ventral view, that is this side, this view, then uh, within their back, if you look at them, it looks like a tape, so to say, especially in the tapeworms. You know, have uh, two main categories. We have uh, the trematoda, we have the cystoda. We're still going to look at this. So let's now look at some of the characteristics of this group of worms known as split helminthes. The first one, like I've said, they are flat worms. They are those who ventrally flattened. And the second one is that they are bilaterally symmetrical. That means their body can be divided into two equal parts. Of course, basically we have bilateral asymmetry and we have radial, uh, radial, radial symmetry. Now, we also have another characteristic, which is uh, the fact that there is a bit what we call a cephalization. Cephalization is the concentration of the sense organs in a definite part of the body that is known as the head. So, if you look at uh, other uh, lower invertebrates, such as a protozoa, for reference in the area, you discover that they do not have a, a definite part of their body that you can call the head. That means they are not cephalized. As a matter of fact, cephalization began with plate helminthes. If you look at the chain of invertebrates, you discover that uh, cephalization began with uh, plate helminthes. That means these are the first group of organisms that uh, began to have a structure that we can now call head. And within that structure called head, there's concentration of their sense organs. That is what we mean by cephalization. Then again, we have that the body is a pseudomate. Now, in the group of invertebrates, of course, we have vertebrates and invertebrates. The vertebrates are those that uh, have vertebral column, and the invertebrates are those without vertebral column. Now, in the chain of invertebrates, uh, we don't want to go into them one after the other. There are so many. Uh, but in the chain of invertebrates, we have uh, those that are pseudomates, we have those that are non pseudomates. When you say that uh, a bit, an invertebrate is a pseudomate, that means uh, it is equipped with pseudom, a, a filled, filled cavity, mm -hmm. that's what we call the pseudom, and uh, it's a movement for most of these uh, uh, invertebrates. Now, we also have a group of invertebrates that do not have this pseudom, the protozoa, the porifera. The cynodaria and plate helminthes are grouped under a pseudomate, whereas the uh, nematoda have four pseudomates, so they are called pseudo pseudomates. They are, of course, from uh, Anelida to Arthropoda to Echinodermata to Mollusca. These ones are the known pseudomates invertebrates. Then, of course, again, we have that they are fibroblastic, that means that they have uh, three body layers the ectoderm, the mesoderm. And the end of them, that is what we mean by being fibroblastic. Then again, we have the excretory system. Yes, they have a special kind of excretory system that is made up of what we call the plain cells. Then uh, the lack respiratory and the circulatory system, you are not going to see this uh, system, you know, the circulatory system and uh, the respiratory system in members of plate helminthes. So these are the few characteristics of this group of parasites called plate helminthes. Now let's now go to the classes. We have uh, the uh, classes of plate helminthes. We have the Tobalelia, we have Temnocephalida, we have Morigonoidea, we have Trimotoda, and uh, we have Cystoda. Now in all these classes, uh, 
of course, you know that the two are there, and ten are there, are free living uh, organisms and are parasitic. That means they don't live in or on uh, the body of a host, deriving nourishment at the expense of the host, and of course, that is what we define as a uh, parasite. Then uh, we're going to concentrate on these two, the trematoda and the cystoda. Now, under trematoda, that is where you see the schistosoma and the fastoda. Basically, we're going to look at the life cycle of these parasites, one after the other. Then we also have the cystoda. Under cystoda, that is where you have the tapeworms. We have several examples of tapeworms, the tenia cilium, the tenia saginata, the female lepis nana, the Diplobotum latum, the experimental SP, the Echinococcus glabrosus, and so on and so forth. So, as time permits, we're going to be looking at the life cycle of this process one after the other. Then, again, before I conclude on this particular thought, we're also going to look at uh, the uh, subclasses of uh, members of Trimatoda. We're going to start with Trimatoda first. Trimatoda is a class, then, the subclass is what we call the Aspidogastia. The Aspidogastia is one of the subclasses. Aspidogastia, Gastia, Aspidogastia. Then you have the Dimozoidia, the Dimozoidia. Then of course again you have the Digenia, Digenia, Digenia. Now, this Digenia is a subclass of Trimatoda. What are the basic characteristics of members of this group? Number one is that. Uh, they have uh, the oral and the ventral sucker. Mm? The, the, the members have root oral and ventral sucker. So they have the oral sucker, the oral sucker, mm? the oral sucker, and they also have a ventral sucker. And uh, of course, they have a complex life cycle in the sense that uh, they uh, require more than one host to uh, complete its life cycle. And for this reason, they are said to be heterogeneous. And they also show what they call a polyembryony, 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 meaning that they can produce many generations of lava in a single life cycle. Then, of course, they have tegument. Their body is, is covered by what we call tegument. And this tegument, you know, it has two purposes. Uh, it, also, it, helps, it helps in uh, uh, protecting the parasite against enzymatic actions of the host, that is number one, and it also is in absorption of food. Now, having noticed now, the last thing I want to talk about is the different morphological body form that will have in members of this group. They exhibit different morphological body forms, different morphological body forms. We we'll have the what we call the this stone, we we'll have the this stone, we we'll have hollow stone. Hollow stone, we have gasterostome, gasterostome, we have the amphistome, amphistome, then we have the, uh, the schistosome, schistosome, schistosome. So these are the different uh, morphological body forms of members of this group. And the uh, under schistosome, of course, they have an elongated body. As a matter of fact, the males are usually longer and larger than the females in such a way that the males now carries the females in a canal mm, that is called gynecophoric canal. Gynecophoric canal. And the essence of uh, doing this is for easy mating. Of course, you know that uh, a parasitic mode of life kind of eliminates the parasites from uh, their normal uh, uh, freedom, you know, normal interaction with other uh, uh, parasites of opposite sex. So one of the uh, kind of advantage when it comes to sex that this stosoma has is that uh, all of its adaptation uh, is that the males now have a special canal uh, from uh, through which they carry the female and that special canal is called gynecophoric canal. That means that it helps the male to easily meet with the female at will without uh, you know, going through uh, the restriction that is imposed on them as a result of their parasitic living. So this is where we end it uh, in this introductory class. In our next class, what I'm going to be doing is to uh, talk about the life cycle of uh, members of this group. 
we start with the issues of summer. After that, we'll talk about the life cycle of Ashola. After that, we'll talk about the life cycle of members of Susuda. Thank you once more for listening. I remember, humble self, Dr. Andrew Jamijana. See you in my next class.